But let's now speak to the man who started all of this in Tiverton and Honiton. Seems like a long time ago now. Neil Parrish resigned from his seat after admitting uh, twice watching pornography in the House of Commons. Triggered the by-election. That seat, rock-solid Tory seat. He won a 24,000-vote majority back in the election in 2019. Now it's Lib Dem and Neil Parrish uh, joins me on the line. Morning, Neil. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. How are you, how are you feeling this morning? Well, other than a, a bit of COVID that um, Sue managed to catch and then given to me, she's getting uh, gradually getting better. I'm not too bad. Um, yeah, I'm I'm getting over it. Um, life moves on, um, and uh, I did what I believed to be the right thing by uh, resigning. And I think, you know, it, unfortunately, it's been very much a referendum um, on the prime minister. Uh, you did the right thing. You were caught out. You you did the right thing and resigned. Is it time for him to do the right thing and resign? Well, I think, um, you know, lots of people have suggested such things. It's for the Prime Minister to consider his position. It's also the MPs to consider his position, because I, I heard Ruth Davidson on and you talking to her just now when you were talking about in politics, you, you need to be a winner. Um, and we, you know, we're we're quite venal as MPs. We vote for those that can win. We don't vote for those that can't. And I think, you know, the, the question mark now is, is Boris still a winner or not? And I think it is very questionable at the moment. Just put a picture for us, Neil, for people who don't. I mean, obviously, I know this part of the world well. How how big is it that this Tiverton and Honiton is no longer represented by a Conservative MP? I mean, it's it's a very traditional Conservative seat. Um, it's really, I mean, I would say very sensible people because I represented them for 12 years and I got on with them very well. I worked hard and I enjoyed doing it. Um, but it is a, a traditional um, to proper, what I call proper uh, Tory seat. And so therefore, to lose this one, you know, by 6,000 votes um, is bad. Now, there is part of it was tactical voting because the Labour vote went down from 11,500 in, in 2019 to 1,500, you see. So that helped greatly. But there was a lot of people, uh, Tories that stayed home, uh, there were lots. There were others that um, defected to the Liberal Democrats. The the, the rural vote um, is unhappy because of our agricultural reforms, and they're not sure that we got the farming and food production right. And I was fighting the corner hard on that. So lo lots of issues going on. Cost of living crisis. People are really feeling the pinch. So it wasn't just. Uh, Boris alone. But of course, naturally, that's where um, the Liberal Democrats pitched it. And in, in fairness, they won fair and square. Uh, do you think that the, the seat is winnable again at the next election? Or, or does this actually, and we saw what happened with the local elections in just over the border in Somerset, where the Lib Dems uh, are now back in control. Are you, does this, are you worried that this means that actually the Lib Dems are back in a big way and could take a lot of other traditional Tory rural seats like this down in the southwest? I mean, the Lib Dems actually naturally always feed on, if they can get successes, they sort of build on that. And, and of course, I mean, I've always said, you know, being a, a traditional Tory, um, that the ones to fear in the West Country uh, always were and always will be the Liberal Democrats. Now, I think come the general election, people have to decide who they want to be the government of the day, and they look much more at policies, not just personalities. Uh, but the Conservative Party is really going to have to turn ourselves around and, and look electable and look like a government, uh, and then we have a chance of holding the seats and even winning the general election. But we can't drift like we are at the moment. Do you think Boris Johnson can turn it around, or does it now need someone else? I think the trouble is, I mean, I, I actually like Boris and I think the big issues, COVID, vaccines, you know, the Ukraine standing up to the Russians, all of these things he's done well. And he was at the Commonwealth Conference this morning and I heard him speaking on BBC News and, and, and he was speaking well. But the problem is, you see, it's now a matter of trust. And, and I think that's difficult to recover from. But, you know, in the end, um, the party and the MPs, they will have to decide in, you know, Parliament, um, do they? Or I guess, yeah, I think it was right to keep Boris through this period. I think it's right because the country did not want, you know, a leadership contest from the Tory party and the rest of it. Uh, but is he the right man to lead us in the general into a general election at the moment? I think that is highly questionable. 
Uh, that's, I mean, it's a, I, mean, that, I think we'll, uh, lots of people will uh, will have some sympathy with that. One of the things that really struck me, Neil, was um, as speaking to people in your in your seat and down in the southwest. You know, I know as you know, I know lots of people down there. Um, you you had quite a lot of sympathy uh, for people thought that you'd you'd done something stupid. You'd paid quite a high price for that, uh, and actually, maybe that played a part for why people didn't uh, turn out and vote. I just wonder whether you feel like. You paid quite a high price. You resigned your seat as a as an MP, um, and yet the Prime Minister, f- fined for breaking the law in Downing Street, clearly oversaw a huge culture of rule breaking in in Number Ten. Uh, he's accused of misleading the Houses of Parliament on a whole range of issues. Uh, he uh, has clearly a, a disregard for for maybe telling the truth or abiding by the rules. And I just wonder if you feel a bit like you've paid quite a high price, and he hasn't really paid a price at all so far. Uh, Matt, I'm, you know, I mean, you don't forget, you know Somerset because you'd be born and bred, my boy, um, in Somerset, and I, I know that. Um, so, you know, um, yes, I mean, it's a great area, but I think, yes, I mean, I think, you know, I mean, Boris is Boris, you see, and he has these sort of characteristics of being very attractive to some uh, and, and turning off others. Um, and I think the, the issue probably is not altogether party gate um i think that was bad but i think the sort of the the twisting and turning um has been the worst part of it and i think you know he, he either is a statesman and can be a statesman like prime minister and then he will lead us into the next election or if he's not capable of being such a, such a prime minister um then he will be replaced before the general election and i mean and that is that's the law of politics i mean i've got to accept i mean i i you know i mean i got a lot of support still in the constituency i know i have um and i'm sorry to leave them because i really enjoyed representing them and i you know i fought the farming and food and, and, and all of these things so hard. Uh, but, you know, in the end, we are all expendable uh, in politics. We've got to remember that. Um, and so, therefore, I've got to sort of pick up the pieces, get on with my life and accept the situation. And I, and I suspect that at some stage, the Prime Minister may have to do the same. Boris Johnson's expendable too. All leaders are, you know, I mean, not, I'm not just getting at, at Boris. I mean, look at, you know, I mean, who is David Cameron, bless him. Um, you know, I mean, um, other than sort of Margaret Thatcher, a little bit on Tony Blair. Um, who was Gordon Brown, a little bit we know. Um, you know, I mean, they come and they go. Um, who was Neil Parrish? I accept that, you know. Um, <laughs> I did a good job while I was there. Enjoyed it very much. Did a stupid thing um, and, and went. Um, but that's life. Um, so, you know, I'm in that sort of very uh, philosophical mood this morning because I think, you know, you've got to pick up the pieces and get on with it. I think the party must listen to what I believe to be very sensible people in Tibbet and Holland. And you can't brush this away. You can't live in a parallel universe. Um, and you have just got to face reality. And I'm not sure the prime minister and the party is at the moment. Just finally, I know some some people tried to encourage you to stand as an independent last time around. Do you think you'd ever uh, stage a comeback if the conservative local conservatives came and said, "Neil, do you want to stand at the next election?" Well, never rule anything out at this stage because it's very foolish in politics. Um, I suspect my sort of major political career is now done. I want to look at you know food farming um, and you know, looking at ways we can actually produce more food and enhance the environment. There's not enough food in the agriculture bill, all those things. Um, I've been working with Fair Share to try and deliver food for four people. So I, I've had a very broad, because being a select committee chair, you you have a very sort of cross-party type attitude to, to life. And of course, I've been very independent. I think that was part of my, my problem, perhaps in the London party, is I was perhaps a little too independent, <laughs> too independent for, their, for, for their liking. And I, I did hold a few <laughs> minister's feet perhaps to, to plenty far enough to the fire but um i must admit i enjoyed it and i make no apology for that neil parish really appreciate your time this morning i hope you get over the covid uh get over the covid soon and appreciate you uh, you joining us uh here on no, time no, nice to see you matt you, you take care all right cheers neil thanks a lot and you uh there's neil parish there joining us uh here on times radio lots of views on what you had to say uh you know Mate, he's extraordinary. It is extraordinary that he resigned for what he did resign for and the things that other people don't resign for. But anyway, there we are. Right, coming up, uh, we'll bring you the midday update at 12 o'clock. All the news you need to know. Up next, we're going to hear from the former Lib Dem leader, Sir Ming Campbell. Uh, Lord Campbell, in fact, of course he is now. Uh, we'll hear from him next.